The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. And... It's another wonderful day at the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing at TFNN.com, your headquarters for Technical Trading and Investing, and me, your lovable, squeezably soft host, David White, for the Power Trading Hour each weekday that there's trading. And uh, that's between 2 and 3 if you want to hear it live. Of course, we just had the Fed come out live and uh, say basically nothing. Not a whole lot of change. We're looking for more data. Uh, we're going to still buy uh, 40 billion in uh, mortgage-backed securities and 45 billion in treasuries, and uh, we'll keep on with the printing and the leveraging and forevermore. Anyway, not a whole lot to actually say, not a big reaction uh, in the markets. Uh, uh, what can we say out here? Uh, eh, showing off uh, about uh, two points on the S&P cash at the moment. Markets eh, kind of moving up. I think we were down about six uh, points uh, before the announcements on the S&P cash. We've got about 2.1 billion shares. And the question is, what are we going to hap happen? I suspect not a lot. I'm looking for a market that maybe is slightly up over the next day or so. Uh, a lot of fund buyers that were probably sitting on the uh, edges of their seat wanting to know whether they should be uh, buying or uh, selling to get ready for redemptions if something bad went, uh, went on with uh, what the Fed was speaking. Uh, but uh, eh, not a whole lot going on out there. So eh, we'll have to see how this sorts out, but uh, not a lot of action, uh, at least that I can see so far. And my guess is that we probably close out the day uh, somewhat flat, probably see a flat tomorrow and maybe even flat into Friday. Probably not a lot of action. Uh, probably a good chance that we're very close at this high of uh, putting in the uh, of the high that we're looking for uh, with uh, you know, 2.1 billion shares, 3.3 uh, billion shares in the close yesterday. We're going to have to have some real action uh, to get this thing to break out. And, of course, a lot of the stocks uh, reporting are not reporting everything that everybody wanted want. So uh, we'll have to uh, look at that. So what do we have going on in the marketplace other than that? Well, I always like to start off the uh, show with some history if we can. And, of course, uh, uh, being Halloween, uh, always the time when we think about Orson Welles' famous broadcast uh, today in 1938, The War of the Worlds. Uh, it was supposed to be a realistic radio dr uh, dramatization of a Martian invasion. And, of course, uh, what happened? Uh, they said it was science fiction to begin with, but because uh, somebody's speech went on along a little long or the news ran a little long, uh, most people never heard that. All they heard was something like this. The Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the Air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's. Ladies and gentlemen, following on the news given in our bulletin a moment ago, the Government Meteorological Bureau has requested the large observatories of the country to keep an astronomical watch on any further disturbances occurring on the planet Mars. Due to the unusual nature of this occurrence, we have arranged an interview with a noted astronomer, Professor Pearson, who will give us his views on this event. In a few moments, we will take you to the Princeton Observatory at Princeton, New Jersey. We return you until then to the music of Raymond Raquello and his orchestra. Wonder whatever happened to Raymond Raquello. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's hard to tell. So uh, what else do we have going on today? Uh, all the news is being uh, sucked up by uh, what we are coming... I'm sorry. So ...to know sorry. as the I'm Sorry Tour... That I was such a 
Yes, uh, the uh, Super I'm Sorry Tour. Uh, today was uh, Kathleen Sibyllis in front of uh, the uh, Congress. Uh, and a lot of yelling and screaming and gnashing of teeth. Nothing got solved. Uh, but there is one thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to do it in the last segment of the show. Uh, but all I can remember is uh, when she was asked about something, uh, I think some young kid wanted to get a kidney, and uh, it was on Medicare or something. Uh, her comment was, some live, some die. And I have a feeling that she's probably not long for the political world out here. But uh, eh, what can you say? Uh, other things going on in the uh, marketplace. Let me uh, get out of here and get into some charts. A lot of earnings uh, going on. Of course, uh, what everybody was looking for was the LinkedIn earnings. Uh, they came out uh, last night. Oh, let's do this. And uh, eh, off a little bit today. Uh, on a strong volume, uh, we still are around 50% of the stocks uh, reporting actually making the revenue numbers. Uh, it's still fairly weak. So uh, we've got um, uh, a lot of problems with that kind of uh, uh, disappointment, especially in some of these larger companies. And I suspect uh, why we're going to continue to try for higher prices over the next few days, I think it's going to be a little tough. Uh, we're back down to being five uh, points down on the S&P cash. Almost always these Fed announcements, you get a push uh, up, then a push down, then maybe a push back up, and it kind of bounces around. About 3.30, you really get a good indication of what you're uh, looking for. So uh, what else do we have going on? Uh, oh, I've got actually got a list of stuff going on out here that I wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, Tesla. Tesla's making a little news. Let's take a quick look at them. TSLA. They've been kind of weak the last few days. Uh, if I can actually type TSLA. It's always typing around this microphone that's always interesting. I'm, I forgot to you stick a big microphone in somebody's face so they can't see the keyboard. Just how much of a, a touch typist they are. Uh, but Tesla is uh, down a little bit today. Uh, they are opening up a West Coast Supercharger Network so that you can actually drive your car and get it charged every couple hours up and down the West Coast. Promising some more stuff, but uh, this thing has been coming back down. Uh, actually pierced its previous low, 161.50, uh, yesterday, uh, but uh, and the volume didn't really shrink. Uh, we're probably going to see us moving back into that area. But a lot of these, since Netflix uh, really blew apart, we're seeing a lot more of these uh, stocks uh, having uh, problems. Uh, Apple, uh, let's take a quick look at that, is having to uh, talk about uh, a great deal of uh, their uh, uh, phones having battery issues. Uh, they say it's limited. They won't give a number on what limited means, but uh, uh, they're exchanging out the uh, new iPhone 5Ss, uh, uh, mostly because of uh, faulty batteries. Doesn't look like they're causing any fire, but uh, uh, I guess they've got the serial number run in which these batteries were causing problems. Uh, Panasonic, I guess, is the battery manufacturer on it, and uh, probably not going to make a lot of difference. Nothing we can really trade off of uh, unless it really starts to uh, snowball and people start talking a lot more about uh, Apple's shortcoming on these batteries. Much more important to Apple right now is that they are controlling the press, uh, almost as good as a political campaign. Uh, they are uh, getting some fairly decent reviews, and I will say probably deservedly so. Uh, but uh, these uh, these are yeah, basically they've bought the press. They they've whittled down the amount of people uh, that will get a the opportunity to give a review for the new iPad uh, Airs down to a handful of people, and if they give them a bad review, uh, they won't get any new products in the future. So you're going to get a lot of these softball uh, questions and uh, uh, review statements, but uh, Apple's been very effective in uh, controlling uh, the media and, uh, to my belief, uh, the propaganda uh, wing of uh, the Apple uh, cult party. Uh, is the product bad? That would probably be a whole different issue, and the product's not bad. Uh, it's just kind of uh, 
uh, the when you read the view, reviews uh, and they start talking about high resolution retina displays and you go well uh, Samsung uh, has a higher resolution for its tablet oh, la, 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 la. just so I'm the software probably a little bit better on Apple uh, hardware probably a little bit better on Samsung and some of the other ones uh, of course Apple has to buy their displays from the same people uh, that they uh, ridicule and uh, demean, and I don't. Th I think that's pretty short-sighted. One of the things we do know now that from going through a lot of the uh, Apple um, paperwork over the last few days that they've been filing, and that is hopefully I have it here. Uh, yeah, is the R and D costs. Uh, are really starting to accelerate. Of course, that's what Apple doesn't want to do is have to depend on other people's hardware. Uh, so what do we have? Apple spent a total of four point, almost $4.5 billion over the uh, 2013 financial year on R&D. Uh, that's up 32% from uh, the year before. Uh, and it looks like uh, uh, actually a whole lot more uh, than 2011. Now, that's a percentage of their... Um, of their income. So uh, it's still going up, but uh, Apple certainly has sales to justify putting that in there. Is it really going to hurt Apple for them going up? Uh, but I suspect, you know, you've got all these employees that really are starting about 3,500 of them starting next year in Austin. And I think that's really when you're going to see the R and D money uh, probably eventually pay off for Apple, but really start uh, hitting at least their accounting uh, and uh, probably I could see Apple being weak through most of uh, next year uh, based on a few things, but uh, that's it. And also when you look at Samsung numbers, uh, Samsung uh, actually has now published uh, the uh, new uh, Galaxy phone, and uh, if... Uh, uh, you'd have to almost give it to Samsung. Uh, they are over 20 million units shipped uh, and activated. Uh, kind of hard to compare against uh, Apple since they are only quoting shipped, uh, not activated. But uh, 20 million phones for Samsung with that uh, new Samsung, uh, what is it, uh, 4? I think it's the current version on the thing. Uh, so they are doing very, very good. And, of course, uh, Apple... Uh, we're well, probably below that uh, twenty percent mark in overall market share. Uh, Samsung about thirty five, forty percent. So uh, much, uh, uh, eh, much interesting. Anyway, uh, we're going to go through a few more news articles. Bottom of the hour, we're going to go to some of these stocks that were reporting uh, last night, and maybe what we have looked forward uh, to reporting tonight. Uh, but uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on ooh, something happened here while i was talking uh, we're down 13 points on the s p cash now we'll be back in a minute Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m., Andy Hecht has a special live online workshop for his subscribers to his weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, called A Roadmap That All Investors Should Use But Most Don't. During this hour-long live webinar, Andy will teach you how to use free and readily available market data to calculate the future expected price range for any asset. It's a simple yet powerful method that every investor should have in their toolbox. The best part is that you can attend this live online workshop, which will be archived, by simply signing up for a 30-day free trial to Andy's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. And this is the last month to lock in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. This price will be going up by over 25% come November, so now is the perfect time to get in on the action. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. For your viewing pleasure, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And that's right. You can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. we got a little bit of action going on here, and uh, I didn't see any news that came out uh, after. it. Maybe uh, we've got to finally a little bit of a nervousness in this market, uh, and uh, we'll keep a close eye on it. Like they said in Orson Welles, keep your eye on the sky. Anyway, we're, we're off about uh, almost 13 points on the S&P cash. Uh, since we know markets only go up, they never go down, uh, this is quite alarming and uh, cannot stand. But we'll have to see whether people step in before the end of the day. Of course, we've got fun buying for a couple more days. Uh, I don't suspect that we're going to see a lot of weakness in the market until after that. Uh, but I think uh, come Monday, we could start seeing uh, the market start to roll fairly hard. VIX is up uh, today. Uh, if you listen to the break, you would have heard that you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. And... Uh, Give me a ring. Of course, uh, we've got uh, gold off about uh, 10 points right now, silver off about three, four cents. Uh, crude, probably the most interesting thing, off a buck 35. It's down to the 96 and uh, what, 96.85 range. Uh, so we've got these commodities continuing uh, to weaken. Gold, not so much, but uh, it is down a little bit. Certainly when we get into crude, uh, looking lower. And uh, you would think that uh, uh, we, you know, we ran out of crude several years ago. 
And uh, everybody kind of kept telling us that. And uh, someone brought it up in the den. We had one of our great uh, contributors that's uh, no longer with us. Always say that the best price for a high price is a high price because that's going to get everybody out there uh, drilling into caribou's heads. Uh, if they can find oil anywhere in it, uh, they'll turn on every one of those pumps uh, that is marginally profitable and uh, have at it. And uh, so if you want uh, a cheaper price, uh, just have a more expensive price, and people will go out there and see if they can't find a new way uh, to make uh, crude cheaper. And uh, maybe not so much crude cheaper, but the, uh, just putting a cap on uh, the demand for oil uh, by uh, fracking has uh, put a huge uh, put on the high end of oil because no matter what, uh, they'll be able to go out and get uh, more oil out of the ground, especially older fields. Uh, you really read a lot these days about those Midland fields in Texas uh, producing huge amounts of oil now with uh, the fracking and the pushing of uh, a lot of the carbo ceramics uh, down them. So we'll take a look. Anyway, uh, just to see, I'm kind of uh, doing a little, we're off 14 and a half points. Uh, 2.3 billion shares on the consolidated tape. So since the beginning of the show, about uh, 200 million shares, not a lot of volume yet so far. So we'll have to keep a, a very close eye on how the market reacts uh, over the uh, next uh, couple hours and into the close. But certainly volume did not look good. We went to new highs uh, and it has been weak. Uh, so let's look at a few more of these uh, stocks. Um, I actually had a question in the den maybe I can get to, and that is how did uh, Samsung actually start uh, becoming uh, uh, build their technological dominance? And um, it, just like most companies out there, they look for what my boss used to call loose bricks. You want to find targeted markets that you can build and own and have decent margins in. And... Uh, Samsung, basically their technological dominance came when they decided to partner with Google uh, with the Android operating system. Uh, before then, uh, they made television, low margin stuff, televisions, stereos, that kind of stuff. Uh, nothing that really happened. So uh, you probably have to thank Google for Samsung's success. I don't think that they would have ever uh, decided to uh, get into the smartphone and tablet business uh, but uh, uh, Google, in their infinite wisdom, a lot of books out there on actually being in the technology field. But one of the best quotes ever was from Larry, Larry Ellison of uh, Oracle. And he, had, well, he has a bunch of them, but probably this one is the one that always stuck with me. Uh, in his meeting rooms and the board when they were talking about doing stuff and competing with other companies, he says, it's not always so important that we win as others lose. And uh, for Google, the one thing they couldn't have is Apple starting their own search company, their own maps company, their own every other company, and being able to uh, cut Google out of the loop uh, meant that uh, they had to make a decision. Either they were going to make a mobile operating system to compete with Apple or be uh, at the sword's end of uh, whatever Apple wanted to do. We'll be back in just a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're going to go uh, directly uh, to the uh, New York Stock Exchange and hear what's going on on the floor. Ooh, yes, uh, something going down the drain there. Anyway, we're off uh, 10 points on the S&P cash. Uh, this cannot stand. How can they actually allow this market to go lower one day? I don't know, but we'll uh, keep a close eye on it. Uh, anyway, we're looking at uh, what is happening in the marketplace. And I don't think it's any strange, especially if you've been looking at charts. Uh, I probably have gone through a couple hundred charts in the last couple of days that are up at highs on a lighter volume. Some actually I was showing in the newsletter this morning uh, that were up to the highs on higher volume but could not hold those highs. So a little bit different out here. Anyway, we're going to go through uh, some of the stocks uh, that are going out here. RRRC. I'll take a look, which is Range Resources Corporation, uh, came out, uh, beat EPSs by a nickel. Uh, this thing's given back a great deal. Got up to 79.45 today. Certainly decent volume. But uh, this thing had a, a very sharp move down from $81.42 on October 16th down to 72.54 on October 25th. Uh, and uh, just uh, a little bit of a reaction out there. Uh, Range resources. Let's get the profile and find out just to make sure. Uh, operates independent natural gas, natural gas liquids, 
and oil company in the United States. So number having anything to do with uh, nat gas right now, probably not good. Uh, UNG, of course, under 18 bucks right now. Uh, and uh, eh, it is what it is. So uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, Gilead looked like they came out uh, also with earnings. Nice little pop out here. Uh, and, of course, one thing I dislike is they really – uh, haven't had a good sign of strength uh, since the uh, $64.04 high in July 26. Uh, got into that with much lighter volume on September 19th. So what we're really looking for is 14 million shares. And they had a day out here that had 15 million shares, but just not much of a uh, large candle. So no real sign of strength. And, of course, maybe just a million shares over it. Uh, this thing eh, kind of going sideways on that lighter volume today. Uh, probably going to get that kind of volume, but certainly wasn't an easy trade out here if you were looking at, of course, uh, Gilead uh, Sciences, of course, big biotech. Uh, General Motors also reporting. Uh, they are uh, got a nice little uh, shooting star out here. You would not want them to uh, open uh, back down about 36 tomorrow, uh, or you might have a, a great signal out here saying, uh, we've got the end of General Motors. Uh, beat quarterly EPS by two cents, 96 X items uh, versus the 94 cent uh, revenues rose 3.7 percent. Uh, we've been talking about this company. It is the poster child for the uh, car sales uh, bubble. Uh, they are the number one by a factor of uh, what 200 percent of putting some uh, subprime loans back out on cars once again. Uh, certainly not a lot of energy in this last leg in the comparisons, uh, but uh, and at least a decent report now. The question is when uh, those uh, subprime loans come home to roost. I need a nice chicken uh, sound right there. Uh, WU, let's take a look at this guy. Western Union, uh, well, they dropped the Chalupa today. And uh, uh, what did they do out here? T -t 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 -t. Uh, beat by four cents. Uh, and uh, it looked like they were not going to raise year-over-year -year guidance, though. Actually, a little bit down, just a tick. Uh, but that was all she needed. And, of course, uh, 1950, uh, two days ago, and uh, down to a low of $15.51. Recovering a little bit of uh, this sell-off today but uh, still ends up being somewhat problematic. The whole business of sending money uh, via Western Union uh, seems rather antiquated now. A lot more online systems uh, when Western Union still, uh, you can do that with them, but uh, still uh, the ability to send money to people uh, becoming more problematic, uh, especially if you are a illegal alien. Uh, in the United States, uh, Western unions made a great deal of money with them sending uh, money back to Mexico. And uh, some of the requirements for uh, showing driver's license and stuff like that from Homeland Security to get over people uh, laundering money uh, has kind of put a hurt in this area. I was kind of shocked. I had to get a money order for something not too long ago. And it wasn't, it was like 75 bucks. Uh, they wanted like two pieces of ID. Uh, like I was buying crack with it or something. I said, you've got to be kidding me. Really? You've got to have this much stuff just so I can send 75 bucks to somebody? Well, anyway, hey, you can see. Uh, SEE, let's take a look at this. Sealed Air. If you're not familiar with this company, uh, a good canary in the coal mine stock, Mostly what they do is they sell those little plastic bubbles that uh, people like to uh, perversely uh, pop. Uh, I guess if you don't have a, a girlfriend that's ever, uh, I won't even get into it, but you know what I'm talking about. They like to pop, well, anyway. Uh, sealed air, they love to pop these little uh, air, balloon, air balloons that come in uh, shipping containers, and they actually sell sealed air. Almost as good a job as selling water. Uh, but uh, eh, not quite as good. Of course, certainly have the volume today. Uh, they need to really hold above that $31.20 high uh, that we saw with 2.4 million shares back on August 5th. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to hold it today uh, if the market continues uh, to be uh, weak. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Okay. So let's go back and check this indexes out here. Yeah, we're off at 10 points right now. So I guess that one little flush did it. Uh, don't need any additional flushes right now. But uh, 10 points, uh, 2.4 billion shares. So volume picking up a little bit uh, down here at the lows. But uh, like I said, we've got a, an organic reason to hold these markets up at least for a few more days uh, and the end of fund buying. Uh, and unless, uh, re unless these funds really start starting to see any kind of redemptions, uh, most uh, um, of them look to be n at least slightly net buyers over the next few weeks. Uh, Tiva Pharmaceuticals. Let's take a look at this guy, see how it did. Another one that uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, really do well now. This one, kind of interesting. You, If you looked at these charts, uh, a lot of these stocks are doing just this pattern, which is this high volume high uh, right before earnings and then falling right off into earnings. Uh, so there's a great deal of short covering and short squeezes being engineered into these uh, earnings dates. Uh, but uh, you basically had 8 million shares uh, back on this uh, October uh, 25th high. Of course, you've got 39 million shares on a down day, and this thing is making a, a little uh, uh, tombstone. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it a tombstone. Doji down here at uh, just under 38 bucks, but uh, uh, you get 6.9 million shares on March 15th. You get, uh, what, uh, 4.9 million shares. goes back into the trading range on June 23rd. You get right up there. You go above it. You basically close at the highs on October 25th, and you get uh, two days selling off into the earnings patch, but uh, it looks like through a combination of news and other things, um, they're able to keep these stocks high. Parallax uh, International, uh, missed a quarter uh, EPSs by one penny. Uh, this is to show you just how uh, perfectly priced a lot of these stocks are. Um, uh, did a 45 cents versus a 46 cent estimate. Revenues rose 13.8 percent to uh, 449 million uh, versus the uh, 458 estimate. Uh, but uh, it, uh, if you're not making and you miss by a penny now, uh, you're going to get fairly uh, punished in, in a bad way. The old whip is coming out. I remember my dad when the belt came out. You knew the punishment was coming. There was no uh, putting you in the quarter corner counting to three. It was three if you could get out the door before he started uh, whipping you with a belt. Of course, they're not allowed to do that anymore. Are they? Um, anyway, uh, we did Gilead. Uh, see if there's anything else we have here. Uh, that's pretty much it. I wanted to look and see how a Facebook does. Uh, since some of these stocks have been uh, disappointing into earnings, uh, Facebook certainly came out. Uh, <laughs> uh, who is John Galt? Okay. Uh, Facebook, uh, this thing has been sliding back down and under 50 bucks now, up to a, a high of $54.83. Uh, of course, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, and that is uh, that uh, one of these uh, survey companies has gone out and checked to see whether or not uh, ad uh, buyers – of uh, uh, ads from Facebook were happy. Uh, there's uh, more than a little bit of anecdotal evidence uh, that this looks like it might have been somewhat of a hit piece. Uh, the other thought is that uh, uh, these people do some of these hit pieces right before earning to get a lot of short into the marketplace. Uh, so they can blow them out. So uh, I'd still wait until earnings to find out what Facebook is going on and doing. But remember, this is uh, just the second quarter where they've actually figured out, uh, at least what they say they figured out, how to uh, have uh, earnings through mobile advertisement. We have no real track record from this company. Uh, I suspect that it's going to be extremely lumpy uh, for their earnings for uh, months, if not years to come. Another good reason why I like uh, companies that go uh, public to have figured out how to make money before they go public. Uh, how do you justify a price, any price, uh, for Twitter? Uh, for a company that's the same thing, hasn't figured out how to make money yet, but because we've got so many people, we know we're going to do that. Uh, anybody that was around uh, for the uh, whole... Uh, 
uh, dot com debacle remembers um, everybody telling you it's different this time, counting mouse clicks and eyeballs and everything other than money hitting that register and ringing that register uh, continues to be a big issue. Uh, let's see if there's anything else out here. Da, 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 da. Wanted to look at a little, uh, see how IBM is doing. Uh, we talked a little bit about this in the last couple of shows. Uh, they basically had a big day yesterday talking about share buyback. The question is just how long that share buyback would last uh, and upping it. Uh, of course, they've been buying all the shares in the world. Uh, by buying shares uh, from the market, you reduce the float, which raises your EPS. So basically, this company has been buying back shares to reduce the float, to keep the EPSs uh, up to uh, projections. Now, the question is, are, is this company uh, like a tree that's rotting inside? One day, it just falls over, and you see all the ants pile out from inside of the core. And, you know, you can make a great case that this is exactly what's happened. The only reason that they're still up in this higher trading range is of buying back shares. Now, Apple, of course, uh, doing uh, kind of the same thing, much smaller scale than Apple has, to, or, than IBM has done. Uh, IBM continues to fire people at an alarming rate, which uh, pretty much sounds to me like you're either getting out of that business or you're selling your seed corn as you go farther, uh, farther forward. Uh, but uh, continues to be an issue. Uh, let's see what else that we have out here. Let's see if we've got. Uh, let me do just a couple of updates here so I can uh, check and see how we're doing. Eh, Four twenty-seven. Okay. I uh, just wanted to make sure my ticker is right. Uh, raw off almost eleven points on the S and P cash. Again, it's going to be what the close is at here. Volume was good, but not huge in this little sell-off. Uh, we're two point five billion shares on the consolidated tape. Probably really not going to get a good clear signal uh, till the end of the day. I'm still forecasting uh, with what we know right now at the moment uh, that we probably see uh, a little buying come in tomorrow and Friday. That'll be the end of fun buying for the most most part. Uh, and then if we're going to have a big move in this market, uh, probably going to be a light volume move up on Friday and Monday probably uh, get into the afternoon, uh, see whether or not people show up to start buying. If they don't, I think that's where we're going to start seeing the acceleration, uh, probably into Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, based on the fact that uh, uh, there's only one Apple and one Google and uh, one Samsung, and if this is going to be a tablet Christmas, uh, we may have a handful of companies doing extremely well and a absolute boatload of companies uh, headed the other way. Uh, everything that we look at, uh, all the surveys, pretty much says the same thing. Uh, people are looking at buying uh, new TVs and tablets and probably not a lot of new computers and not much else. Uh, almost all the retail space that we see uh, when we look at the reporting for the last probably 30, 45 days, uh, for all the teen retailers shows just how much money they aren't spending on new clothes and how much money they're spending on a new iPhone or a Samsung a Galaxy 5 or all the other things that are out there. So uh, keep an eye on that. I'm looking at a lot of weakness uh, that I see in uh, retail space. So we're going to see how that plays out over the next few months. Not Nothing in the next couple of days, but... Off uh, 11 points on the S&P cash. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And just going to take a quick look to see what else we've got moving out here. And then uh, I've been wanting to, well, I wanted to get into this one. Uh, and then uh, I'll have a few comments to wrap the day up. Uh, Flexera, of course, came out with earnings, another one uh, with earnings that didn't miss. But, again, we've got so many of these stocks. Uh, and the signal is kind of like the dog that didn't bark in the Sherlock Holmes uh, articles uh, or books. And that is you get to these highs, you get – Lots of volume out here, and they can't just hold these highs, uh, which is uh, just about the same thing. You need a sign of strength, which is a big candle with big volume. You get big volume, and it can't hold those highs. Uh, you always have to worry about them coming back and, and getting them and taking those. But uh, uh, you also have to be very wary if you 
Got a big seller back up here. Flextronics had that. It's been selling off for the last couple of months. Uh, actually got hammered down today with huge volume. Uh, probably going to see the $7.28 low very quickly, which is back to the uh, July 24th low for 5.4 million shares, which is probably going to act as support before this thing gets going on. Uh, do it the last few minutes. Uh, someone had been emailing me about... Uh, uh, maybe some of my views, and I have a good story uh, that illustrates exactly my beliefs on this. Uh, I was with a girlfriend in a car. We were coming up to a uh, a intersection with a four way light, and there's you know, three lanes on each side. So basically, you got uh, uh, what uh, four or five lanes going east west, and six or seven lanes going north south. And uh, there's a gas station right there on the corner. And uh, some guy wants to pull out into traffic. Now, there's probably well, a good seven, eight cars in front of me and another ten cars behind me. And I said, oh, don't let that guy in. And then instantly my girlfriend said, oh, you got to let him in. you got to let him in. And I thought, oh, really, we got to let him in? I mean, that would be the nice thing to do if there weren't 10 or 15 people behind me. But it played out exactly the way I thought it did and would, which is uh, there was this kind of uh, semi-retarded uh, dance where one guy waves and the other one guy doesn't wave. And uh, he kind of – in about 45 seconds later, the guy finally pulls out of the gas station. We've got 10 people waiting behind it. And, of course, by the time I get to the light, it's changed. So I get to wait for another four minutes, plus the ten people behind me that all could have gotten through the light. So really, is letting the one guy in so that ten people can wait another four minutes really the right, right thing to do? If we would have just gone ahead, the guy would have been able to pull out up and catch the night, uh, next light. He may have had three minutes to wait. But we had 10 people times three minutes. We just wasted 30 minutes of people's time. And that whole idea that just because we want to be nice, that we're going to make things really horrible for the rest of us, is just beyond me. Uh, I don't know what kind of society we have where just because you want to do good and you make everybody else's lives miserable in the meantime, uh, that it's really, is it really that great? Are you really that good? Are you just somebody that thinks that no matter what your intentions are, they're all that matter? And I think right now in politics, and especially in Washington, D.C., there are some with this opinion. It doesn't matter how many people get screwed over. Read me because I'm self-employed. Uh, I'm not one of these guys that get grandfathered in. I'm going to take a huge raming uh, if uh, this thing isn't delayed another year. Um, but, uh, of course, yeah. The one guy got out in front of me. That's all that matters. Anyway, I'm mad as hell and not taking it anymore. See you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Basil Chapman has just announced that he will be hosting a one-day online master trader class. Friday, November 8th, Basil Chapman will teach you the essential fundamentals he uses when trading the market with his Chapman Wave methodology. Included in this full-day online master trader class is one month of Basil's daily newsletter service, The Opening Call, a $128 value, as well as a copy of his CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which usually sells for $249. Join Basil Chapman for this powerful one-day online master trader class Friday, November 8th, which will be archived if you can't attend live, where he'll give you a complete understanding of the Chapman Wave methodology and how to apply it to profitably trade any market in any time frame. For all the details and to reserve your spot while taking advantage of early bird pricing and saving $200 off the regular price, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.